Slaughter and Processing Unit, Regulations and Licenses, narrated by Julie Larson and the developer of this course. The slaughter rules and regulations vary from state to state. So you're going to need to find out um, exactly what the, the rules are in your state. If you're in Illinois, um, there are three possibilities for um, the slaughter of your animals. The first one is on your farm. That's a, a do-it-yourself. You only have a few animals that you want to harvest. You're going to keep them in your own freezer, your refrigerator. It's going to be consumed only by you and your family. Um, this is not meat that is for sale. Um, get a lot of trouble for that. Second way, um, and this is also to slaughter on your farm, if a customer or somebody happens to call you on the phone, say, I'd really like to buy one of your sheep or goats or chickens, but I would also like to be able to slaughter it right there and uh, put the carcass in the back of my trunk. This is illegal in Illinois. So you have to be very careful uh, if somebody comes to you and asks you to do that. So generally you don't want somebody doing that. You would recommend taking it to a processor. Third way is of course to go to a licensed processor. Uh, this way you're able to sell any excess that you might have, uh, especially if it's a USDA facility. So if you have only a few animals, you may decide to do your slaughter on farm. Uh, there are some advantages to this, especially if you only have a few animals. You do not have to transport uh, time. Um, it does take a long time for many of the animals, but certainly um, you, there is no traveling involved. A couple things to keep in mind. Have someone you trust show you how to do it. Uh, if you've never slaughtered an animal before, there are uh, certain things you really want to keep in mind uh, and want to follow some of the rules set out by the USDA Humane Slaughter Act of 1978. This does not uh, include chickens. However, it does go through all the methods that are considered humane and how to do them. It would be a great idea to check those out before you start um, slaughtering your animals. One thing also to keep in mind is that once you've done this, you cannot sell any part of that carcass that is strictly for uh, your own consumption. And uh, one thing also is that it can be very time consuming. Um, it, mo many of the animals, the, the goats and the sheep, will uh, need to be um, uh, hung uh, for tenderness, probably sometimes seven to ten days, depending on the age of the animal. You need a place to be able to do that safely. Uh, so there are some things to, to consider. Uh, uh, chickens uh, can be messy, can take a while. If you're only doing a couple at a time, maybe that's okay. Or turkeys, this might work out for you instead of spending the whole day at the processor. So you've decided that you really don't want to handle the slaughtering on your own farm, so you have to look for a meat processing facility. The first type is a USDA inspected facility. This means that you can sell out of state and also at a retail level. The facilities have a USDA inspector on the premises at all times. The second one is a state inspected facility, which means that you can only sell your product within the state, but it's fine at the retail level, but only within your state. The third type is a custom processor. This means that it's, they have a limited inspection. The state inspects it and also the uh, USDA inspects it, but there is nobody there round the clock. So usually this is for people 
who are only going to uh, have a few animals. Um, many deer hunters use these type of facilities uh, because you cannot resell this meat. It's only for your own consumption. So if you're looking to sell, make sure that you have either a USDA inspected plant or a state inspected. Poultry and rabbit processing works a little bit differently. In Illinois, you're allowed to slaughter up to 5,000 birds a year on your farm, and you can sell them. This is only for a two-year exemption. After that, you do need to go to a processing facility, but for those two years, you are able to do the processing on your farm. You cannot sell it retail, however, you can have people come to your farm and buy it from you, but you cannot take it off the farm. You can only process animals that are from your flock. You have to apply to the state in order to get this exemption, and it's subject to inspection at any time, which means that they do not need to give you a warning and they can come to your farm and inspect you at any time gets a little bit tedious. Some people have, this has worked okay for them, but it, it can be a problem. They can uh, be a little bit of uh, a, a problem. The second one, federally inspected, so the USDA, and you can sell your products retail across state lines. And the third type is a state inspected facility, very much like the four legged you can sell retail within the state, but you cannot cross, cross, cross state lines. So preparing to take your animals to the processor, there's a few things to think about. Make sure that you are ready. Uh, the optimal ages and weights of that particular animal. Is it really going to get you, is this the, the best amount of meat as opposed to fat? And the, uh, thinking about chickens, if you waited another week or two, would they grow a little bit bigger but not get tough? So it's really a matter of knowing your own animals. Second thing to think about is transportation. How are you going to get your animals there? Do you have a livestock trailer? Maybe you don't need a livestock trailer. Maybe it's just a matter of a few very large dog crates uh, for some of the smaller goats or sheep on the back of a truck might be just as, as uh, good as having a whole uh, livestock trailer. One thing to think to keep in mind in transportation is that um, there's a shrink that begins to happen on the weight of the animals. So the first 20 hours the, the gut material is going to break down and uh, that will take some weight um, as the gut goes down, it takes some weight off. And after 20 hours of no feed or water, the uh, water is actually drawn out of the tissues, which creates a, a smaller weight of your final carcass. So really it's best to get them to the processor as soon as possible. You want to think about the turnaround time for the processor. You probably want to call them. Uh, you'll have to call them to make your appointment to get in, but you're also going to want to ask them a few questions about um, how long you expect to uh, that you'll have to come back and get them. Uh, you want to understand uh, how long they, uh, for some of the animals, that there would be a hanging time to tenderize the meat. Uh, that's not always um, important, especially for younger animals. Uh, but certainly for if you were taking in some of your older sheep or goats, that would be a consideration. And then also you want to think about refrigeration back at your farm. Um, the refrigeration to get them back to the farm. First off, uh, do you have freezers that you can uh, put on the back of the truck? Or do you have a lot of uh, um, freezer chests? with ice packs that you're able to transport it, especially in the summer, 90 degree day, you do not want to be hauling that meat that you've just spent so much time. Um, these animals are getting ready, and then all of a sudden, you, the 90 degree day, and you are not prepared. So really think ahead and have all your ducks in a row. Um, and then as well, when you get home, are you, where are you going to put all this meat? 
Um, so some things that really, before you even uh, get to start taking your animals in, be prepared for, for the end. So you want to think about your, the optimal weights and ages of animals, especially when you're making out your plan uh, um, for the future. Uh, you want to think of lambs from 8 to 10 months, ready to go to the processor, hopefully are going to be 105 pounds to 130 pounds. That should give you a nice size carcass for uh, um, getting chops and, and shoulder. Uh, goats, a little bit smaller, 50 to 80 pounds at, at that same age range, 8 to 10 months. Uh, broiler chickens, um, optimal 5 to 6 pounds at 45 days. And then turkeys, uh, 25 to 32 pounds at 18 weeks. They take quite a bit of time to, uh, to get to maturity. Of course, these are all dependent on the breed types and what you're feeding them, the conditions you have. In the winter, it's harder to keep weight on. In the summer, they can tend to get fatty if you're giving them too high quality of food. So uh, these are just guidelines to go on as you're making your plan. For the future. So when you get to the processor, they're going to have ask you some questions. And the first thing is how you want your chickens to be processed. The easiest, of course, is just to have them done as a whole bird. This also goes for turkeys or uh, duck, pheasant. Whole is the easiest and the cheapest. I'll give you one price for that. The second uh, way to do it is to have them cut up, where they just cut up into four pieces um, with the back. Sometimes they take the backs out. Every processor will be different, so talk to them so you're very familiar with how they're going to handle um, your birds. Another way they'll ask you is if you want them in parts, which means uh, do you want just a... Can, um, a package of maybe two breasts or four breasts and then uh, would you like the legs to be separated into packages uh, do you want the hearts and livers to put in uh, put all of them into one big bag or do you want those to go with the chickens so there's some things you want to think up about uh, so you're prepared when you get to the processor and you can answer these questions. So if you have 10 birds, maybe you want to have a mixture of all that, or maybe you are very good at, at butchering your own, because it does cost more than when, uh, as you get more and more refined. So um, having them do skinless, boneless chicken breasts is going to cost you a lot more than just having them do them whole. So, uh, but if you're selling... You want to have, for your customers, you're going to have a lot of people who want that skinless, boneless chicken breast. So lamb and goat cuts, uh, when you go to the processor, you want to think about how you want to have them cut up. But there are some, the primary cuts, uh, where they're just very simple. Uh, you can, Actually, you can have them just what's called a kill and chill which is just exactly what it sounds like. They just kill them and uh, skin them and clean it, and you could just take home the entire uh, animal. That's really great if you want to do a, a, you're having a summer barbecue and you just want to have it on a, a open spit. Um, but most of the time, people are going to want to have them cut up. So there are uh, the shank, leg, chump, tenderloin. So you want to get familiar with all these different cuts. Uh, it does get very complicated, uh, but you really, you really do want to understand this so you can talk uh, intelligently with your processor. Because they will ask you, they will do just anything you want, but you have to make some decisions how you want that done before you get there. So when you take your animals to the processor, uh, as far as goats and sheep or pigs or uh, beef are concerned, uh, they will want to have the cut sheets filled out. Uh, whether you're going to want them just as a whole animal, halves, cut into halves, quartered, or further broken down into, there's a uh, shoulder section, leg, leg section, rack section, loin section, and then the organ meats. So how you want all of these things to be processed. 
Uh, this is an actual cut sheet from a farm in central Illinois, and it's for seven different uh, pasture lambs. Uh, one of them, if you follow along from the top, one of them, the 38-pound lamb, is going to be uh, only kill and chill. Remember, we talked about kill and chill. It's only uh, ready to go. It's a whole carcass ready to go on uh, in the oven, very big oven, or on the spit. Uh, some restaurants will want them that way because they like to butcher them however they want them. Um, and then with each of those, within each of those sections, you can see that uh, it's further broken down into the different cuts, uh, the size package you would like, um, the type of packaging, CV is Cryovac, uh, freezer paper is FP, the chub is um, kind of like those little rolls uh, or cylinder of meat. They have the ground lamb um, done that way. Uh, but you can see all the different organ meats, their possibilities, and things you want to consider when you are, uh, what, how you want your animal to be processed. So to wrap it all up, you really have to think about what is best for your operation. There's a lot of different options here that you can uh, do for your animals. How do you really want them to be processed? So what are you actually going to be doing with the meat? Uh, is it for just for your own consumption, maybe friends or family? Or are you going to be really trying to sell this? Are you going to farmer's markets? Are you going to go to retail stores? Uh, how many animals do you have? One or two? Well, probably just slaughtering on the farm is going to work okay for you or the custom processing. But if you're really gonna try and do this as a business, you need to uh, put all of these costs from a facility, a processor facility, and include all these costs into your business plan to, to see how you're gonna be able to come ahead with all this. Uh, you also need the infrastructure, the transportation, the refrigeration, all things to consider as we go forward and making a, a on-farm plan for your operation.